Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where we are going to be diving straight into the Bitcoin chart here, uh, going over the all time high and how one could look to approach the trading today. So I hope that you find that very helpful. And then we'll also be covering Ethereum as Ethereum is retracing down to our big daily supports. So I feel Ethereum has that really nice setup coming and Bitcoin, well, really simply we're in all time highs. Uh, so that's what we got to cover today. So I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed the video. And let's just get straight into the Bitcoin chart. So, wow, I mean, a review, quick review of what happened yesterday. Obviously, we had the original breakout long of $50,000, which ended in a poor trade. We made our way down and we obviously hit our four levels of confluence. As you know, if you watched last night's live stream, we had four levels of confluence of support here, which in the end was the absolute low, which held and we see another push to the upside on Bitcoin. So now we're pushing up here on Bitcoin. Um, you know, we're at around 51,800. So you, let me approach this in a just a calm manner of saying, in trading, you always have three options. You have the option of longing, you have the option of shorting, and you have the option of staying out of the market and, and taking no trade, which is a trade in itself. Especially if you're just sat in spot Bitcoin, you know, you're in a comfortable position because you, you're making money while Bitcoin goes up while being in no trades. So that's obviously a comfortable position to be in as well. But so you have three main options here. Um, option number one, let's say shorting. Uh, would I short Bitcoin when it's impulsing up in an all-time high? So what does impulse mean? It means an impulse is basically a impulsive move to the upside, which is, you know, one would say a very strong bullish move. Okay, and so Bitcoin is currently impulsing up. So would I short Bitcoin when it's impulsing at all-time highs? The answer is no. So personally, I, I personally would not short Bitcoin where it is now. I feel it's... Uh, too much of a gamble trade. Yes, that could this be the high? Yes, but it's just it's just not a good idea to try and short Bitcoin when it's in an impulse. Okay, so that's the first thing that I say. I, I I would definitely wouldn't short it. So option number two is 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 this a good long? Well, if you get a nice retrace of resistance to support, so I guess the actual live sort of how I'd approach it. Would I long Bitcoin where it is right now? No, but I'd want if I got a retrace. Okay, so if we can get a retrace to test resistance as support, for example, then you start to have a a, a proper setup which you can look to long, I, I believe. Um, and then the third option is just staying out of the market and just remaining patient. Either you remain patient for a, a bigger retrace or you're just comfortable holding spot Bitcoin. You know, I feel that's an acceptable option as well. You know, staying out of the market and, and waiting for a good setup is, is always a option which is many of the time sensible so option number one shorting bitcoin would i short bitcoin here no just really simply for the fact we're at all-time highs and we're in the middle of an impulse that's generally not a good time to short bitcoin okay option number two would i long here i would yeah to be honest i'd be much more interested in long now if we can get a retrace uh to test resistance as support so where are your key levels of support where one could look to long retraces i mean the most obvious one now is fifty thousand dollars fifty thousand dollars was such a big resistance over the past few weeks such a big psychological level when that level breaks you then generally will expect that to turn into support so what we mean by this is if you have a clearly defined resistance which is just just over $50,000, 50200 uh, If you get a retrace and you retest resistance, one would generally expect that to hold as support for continuation to the upside. And the, the reason why this would offer a good long position, again, this might not be given, but if it is given, that would offer a good intraday long, I would say, simply for the fact that you know where you're wrong. And you know where you're wrong if this starts to come back below $50,000 and you even get like a retest and it starts to head back down, well, then that's obviously showing you signs of weakness to, to get out of the long, essentially, you know. If you take trades, you don't want to hold them, you don't, you don't want to need to hold it forever. You just want to get in where you see there's a setup and then get out when you see you're invalidated okay that's why you have a stop loss but i, I would imagine if given i mean it, at the moment it doesn't doesn't really look like it's going to retrace back to fifty thousand dollars but this can change over the course of the next few hours of course uh, but at the moment it doesn't look like it's going to come down that far but you've got to be prepared you, you know if you're not prepared for that retrace then what you're going to do if it comes so you know you've got to be ready i would say that's a level of me now big resistance turned into support so i would personally look to long a ret retest of the resistance of fifty thousand dollars into support um you know if i'm looking to long here 
where would I place my stop loss to like get out of the trade? Well, really simply what I would look for is if we lose that level and we sort of get a retest and we head back down. And that for me would be an invalidation of that setup and, and really simply I'd, I'd close the long trade. Um, so that, that's the long that I would look for in an intraday basis. I personally wouldn't be so interested in shorting this. I feel yeah, it's just not really a short that I would personally like to take. I like to take my shorts intraday when we're forming a bit of a range where there's clear invalidations. I don't have that here. So I wouldn't really probably look to short Bitcoin today, if I'm totally honest. Uh, at least not where what with the data that I've got now. Again, maybe this changes in a few hours time, but based off of what I have right now, I personally wouldn't short it. Um, so that's that's the way that I approach this. Obviously, no financial advice. I'm not telling you what to do with your money. This is no financial advice whatsoever. Um, so just please bear that in mind. I'm definitely, definitely, definitely not telling you what to do. But that's kind of look how I would like to approach the market today based off of the data that comes in and, and the reactions that we get. So I feel that's pretty simple on Bitcoin. I feel we can move on to Ethereum. Um, Ethereum, obviously... Moving down towards this daily level, okay, so Ethereum, we have this really big support that we were looking at in last night's live stream of this daily. We were saying how this could be a really nice long opportunity on Ethereum. We've still got a couple percent to come down here. But the thing is, again, so it's really, you know, just how we looked at Bitcoin. We're saying resistance flips into support offers a good long. Well, look at this. You have resistance of daily resistance, 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 resistance broke through. So if we can retest really simply again, a resistance into supports that offers a good long, doesn't it? Again, where would the invalidation be on this is if you lose that support and you start to hold it as resistance, then that's obviously an invalidation that that's a good long setup and, you know, you have to get out of the market. There's never 100% in trading. You just got to trade what you feel is the most probable. And I personally feel that that's a highly probable trade that we get a bounce off the daily. Does it have to happen? No, we could just lose the level and, and continue downwards. Um, so obviously I'm prepared for it to be, you know, invalidated, but that's a level where I personally feel is a really nice long on Ethereum and on Bitcoin, again, intraday setups. I do feel that that's a really nice long on, um, on Bitcoin. And I suppose like this is the thing that I'd emphasize here. Um, you got your intraday trades and then you got your swing trades. So this is like a really good example of like a live example of, how one manages their trades and swing trades versus intraday scalps. Um, so for the example here, obviously, if you're new to the channel, I guess you're, you've are you probably not seen this, but if you've been a subscriber for a few weeks or more, you know, we got like the Champions League and this is just a Bitcoin trading competition. And inside of the Bitcoin trading competition, obviously, I managed to get this really nice swing trade, which was literally off the low of the consolidation at 40, basically $43,000. And so this is a swing trade that I am in, you know, I'm in this on several accounts. And this is the thing. When you get really nice entries and you get really nice swing trades, you can, because we're in a bull market, okay, and what's the bull market categorized by? Really simply, the whole the whole time we've been up in this, it's just been making, let's just zoom out a little bit. We've just been making higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. This is another higher high. So this the bull market is categorized by these higher highs and higher lows continuously. So this is the thing that when you get nice entries, you know, low down in a, in a bull market, you want to let your winners run as long as possible. So from a swing trader's perspective, you know, I'm still in my swing trade longs and there's absolutely no reason to close. I would definitely not take a swing short at the moment. And, you know, these are these are the trades that I'm still in. And that account, by the way, this this account has only been running since entry to here. So six days, nearly just under a week. And that account's already up over 100%. So the account has doubled. You know, you've doubled the account in six days of trading. And it's just really simply how have I managed to do this? It's by getting into an original nice entry and then not over managing it. It's while we were consolidating here and we were still making higher highs and higher lows. Obviously, I've got, I've got no reason to close that long. Um, and, you know, I still have no reason to close it because you know, even if this is the top, while we can still retrace and make a higher low, I mean, we could, we could retrace to, you know, $48,000, for example, $47,000 and still make a higher low. So market structure is so important, how it's important for managing your swing trades, which this is obviously swing trades. And then it's recognizing what's the difference between a swing trade and an intraday scope. So I think just for a, 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 another dip, bit of a tip here, I think for the swing trades, you know, long trades are obviously better because we're in a bull market. For intraday trades, that's where short positions are 
acceptable and fine in my opinion you know it's fine to short in a bull market but if you short in a bull market you got to know to lock in profits you got to know to take profits if you hold on to that trade forever you, you're obviously going to lose money um so i think that that's a big factor in terms of trading you got to know what's the best for a swing trade what's the best for an intraday trade and you know sometimes that might possibly be, be no trade as well but yeah that's kind of how i'm managing my positions that's the update that i wanted to give you so it's still in my swing trades but in terms of intraday trades yeah i'm, I'm not so keen on on the sh shorts on the intraday here again simply because we're in an impulse i have no desire to try and try and short the impulse right now uh maybe if we form a bit of a low and a lower high and we get some bearish divergences it opens the realms of possibilities but again that that's data that's not that i've not got yet uh i feel that <laughs> go away i feel that we have uh a potential really nice um long opportunity if we manage to retest that resistance as support i feel that would be the best intraday trade and ethereum coming down to that daily level again i feel that's a nice intraday trade so i'm, a, I'm aware today of my intraday trades which i'm going to be looking for longs personally um laying off the shorts and unless i suppose where would i short it would have to be if we come back into the zone so if we, if we really took this and i would take a long here but if i take the long and i get stopped out of the long and it invalidates me well then naturally i'm going to be thinking okay that's obviously a bit you know that's more bearish and then i can look for a short so that does mean i wouldn't be short in the up at the highs here i'd have to short lower but i'd have a step of confirmation to enter that short so that's that's the way that i would approach this okay so there we go that was the update that i wanted to give you this morning a quick rundown of the chart where we're up the trading options and how one could approach this going forward so i hope that that was really really helpful for you and um i'll catch you in the next video that i make so cheers everybody have a brilliant day ahead and hope you enjoy trading this thank you ever so much and goodbye cheers